cookies. Cookies are good to eat. Do you like cookies? I like cookies. Do you like this cookie? I like this cookie. This cookie is the perfect combination of delicious chocolate with just the right amount of vanilla filling. Do you know its name? Sunshine Hydrox? Which cookie is perfect as dessert or with your favorite desserts? Sunshine Hydrox. And which cookie is the original cream-filled chocolate cookie? Sunshine Hydrox. Anybody knows that. But I was going to say, to your point of like how Trumpet is defying voice actors to take on iconic roles, I think one of the ways you work around it is you alter the character a little bit to fit the voice, I would think, or the voice actor, like they did with... Um, Skeletor in the new He-Man? Skeletor, exactly. And um, Joker for the Harley Quinn series. Like, you don't make them the exact same thing and say, like, oh, voice act it the same way that this guy did. Like, you're not going to get another Mark Hamill that way. But Alan... Two Tudor, whatever. Yeah. Does, I think he does a good Joker. He makes that Joker his own. What? Bloody hell! But it, it's billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne! No! No! Are you shitting me? What is wrong with you? Don't you think I would have done that had I wanted to? Half the fun of our relationship was the mystery. Now I know Batman is just some boring rich asshole with parental issues. That's really reductive. Thanks for ruining the funniest <laughs> thing I had going. Now I don't even feel like torturing you. S sorry, I, I, I thought it might be the kind of thing Harley would do. I don't care about Harley. <laughs> and I think you could do the, You could have done the same for this Bugs. Like, you don't have to make him the one from the 96 version you make him it's this it's bugs. harder with bugs because there's been a lot of different takes on the joker bugs there's kind of one bugs but it's i also like, think it's, it's the mickey mouse of it too it's yeah. the same thing it's like you have an iconic character who's <clears throat> who's who's one still in it's still in the the zeitgeist because you keep replaying all those old cartoons and you're you're doing what you can to keep them in a certain amount of rotation and so you, and also those kids are if i see the if i'm if me and my kids are watching cartoons and i hear the bugs bunny voice i want it to be the same one that i heard and i want it to be the same one for them whoa whoa he man which boy is, which Why don't is you calm down but that's my point though is that because he man has had so, so much time away and back and forth we've had time to open up to new new adaptations we had the 2000 double x one that's um i'm sorry 2000 x that patrick was referencing we have the original one that that I that we all grew up on. So we've had time to step away from it. Whereas with Bugs Bunny, they've tried their best to keep that character in in a certain amount of rotation, I guess. So you lock into that one core idea of the character and like that's like and once it leaves Chuck Jones, we're kind of like, oh dang, like how do you get past that? And with like with Garfield, I don't want to hear anyone besides Lorenzo music. So everyone else yeah. is doing a bad Lorenzo music imitation aside from Bill Murray, who's just doing his Bill Murray thing, which there's a, there's a whole circular thing with Bill Murray and Lorenzo music as characters. There's a thing there, but <laughs> have you tasted yourself lately? Hey, it wasn't exactly the first class lounge in there for me either. Get yourself lost. Lewis, take a powder for a couple days, get a haircut and grow a beard. Cool. I owe you one G. But it's, it's weird because your your mind has certain like kind of I don't know what it, like pillars of characters and Bugs Bunny is locked into that like it's it, there's never been another take and he is so associated like there's some characters associated with childhood especially for with Bugs Bunny with our generation like that is you're not gonna break out of that and okay. they've never well, even not, tried I'm well I would argue that you're not you don't have to fundamentally alter the character you can give him personality just like the joker is it fundamentally different in any, any take you have he's he's still the joker he's still a psychotic you know uh mass serial killer like that's the version of him that everyone does they just all you know you have a version with dreadlocks you have a version who's you know super over the top you know there but there's still the fundamental structure of his character you can do the same thing with bugs and i would argue that since they fucking hip-hopped him up in the 90s we haven't seen a new version of bugs since then just like you were talking about we have different versions of he-man he hasn't actively been drawn in new stuff where people can reference be like oh yeah bugs was this in 2012 like i remember that it's like yeah 96 he wore jeans backwards cap and jerseys all the time and since then we haven't had a new bug so you can come up with a new bugs for 2021 
there has been other bugs. There's been they've done cartoons. They've done the Lun- Luna, yeah. <clears throat> the Lunatics. They've done they've done they've done additional cartoons since then. I mean, obviously they haven't been on your what radar. What was the Lunatics about? Uh, the, the that one was one of the versions where they were superheroes. Um, I'd have to uh, Luna. Lunatic, Lunatic, Lunatics Unleashed was the name of the series. Um, let's see. And there's. And when was that done? Uh, that was two, uh, 2005 to 2006. Okay. Um, and then there's. I'd have to. I mean, I wonder if I can pull up a good look. Oh, um, Duck Dodgers. New Looney Tunes. Let's see. I'd have to. But they are all trying to do Chuck Jones. Yeah, they're all still. Everyone's still holding on to the same yeah. idea, and I, I, I definitely. Well, that's my point: is that you don't, you can do a different version of of bugs. You can even do what you call a modern version, which is what we did in the '90s anyway. Like that wasn't the bugs that our parents we st- we started off with. I, but I argue that you can't. Just like you can't do a different Mick, uh, Mickey Mouse. Like yeah. you have to stay pretty. Like not. I mean, and that's. It's because well, of my the, question is, what do you mean by different then? Because Mickey Mouse also went through a hip hop phase too, and it didn't—it didn't fundamentally change him. We just accepted it. I said a hip hop, a hip hop. <laughs> We've oh, all been through was, a hip hop phase. We get it. Yeah. I'm just saying it's the way that he was marketed, and it didn't change people's perception but, of him, though, even though he was different. But Kareem, it's not the—it's not that type of characterization. It is the fundamental look and voice. That's my point. Is though the fundamental look of Bugs was different. He still looked like Bugs. It was just Bugs with baggy pants. So why not? So why could? And if this was a Bugs with baggy pants that was more modern, you keep saying more modern, but nobody's talking for, about the modernizing him. In he's still gonna look like Bugs Bunny no matter what clothes you put him in. It's the it's the sound. But he but he didn't act like. But I'm saying he didn't act like Bugs Bunny in those clothes. He didn't. He wasn't that Bugs Bunny that we grew up with. That was running around naked and slapping the shit out of Daffy Duck. I mean, I. He, I mean, one when he when he was in those baggy jeans and stuff, that's just on T-shirts and stuff. That's not necessarily a. He was animated in that stuff. I he mean, just le- he would just lean when? on stuff with a okay. carrot and, st- and say sarcastic shit. In what in what medium? Where was the? Yeah, where I don't remember that. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I'll, I'll put it, I'll put the videos in here, but he's done it. I mean, I I remember I them. I remember like their. Yeah, I remember seeing TV. Uh, TV. I remember seeing T-shirts and stuff like that. Like that was definitely like a clothing brand at the time i i remember that distinctly as far as seeing him animated to the be essentially chris or uh what would say uh not chris was it, yeah chris cross like essentially acting like chris cross i remember those designs too but i don't remember that being portrayed in a animated format i the best part of all of this is that you went just to chris cross well they make you jump jump it's fair i mean well, why don't you warm it up, up backwards though I mean, I, I bet if you Google that, you could probably find them wearing back, backwards jerseys. Um, Perhaps. Also, this uh, side note, unrelated, can we call this Ken says fuck you to LeBron James? <laughs> I, why, why, I have, uh, LeBron's been great to me and my family, okay? I don't know why you guys are insinuating <laughs> that he's been anything but a gentleman every time we've interacted. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever, man. You hate LeBron James. It's totally cool. We get it. Fair enough. <laughs> Your rage knows no bounds. Um, <laughs> what is going I don't know. I, I, I do, Ken. I, I agree. I, I, I will say I agree more with Ken in that I just, it would be very difficult to give Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, those kind of pillars a, a different, like a truly different voice. I'm not saying, well, I get, I get, I get that you're not saying. I, I think I get what you're saying and that you do a modern take on it. And then even if the voice is similar, the take on it is different enough to where it's not as bothersome. I think that's a lot harder to do with those particular characters. It started out really in the animated medium and the first 60 years of their existence had the same voice. It's a lot harder mold to break out of than the Joker, which started in comics has been interpreted and reinterpreted literally just had a comic the three jokers um yeah but i mean as far as voice acting is concerned like we only had one joker voice at least animated for a long time even live action we had a di- we had a totally different one live action wise to like get 
to get you know used to uh but that's 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 kind of to the to strengthening our points is that you had you had the Cesar Romero Joker the in the um 66 series you also then had the uh, Jack Nicholson after that, and you've had a litany of different Jokers, and then we Jack did... Nicholson in one movie, though. Right, but that, but I'm, I'm giving you two examples leading up to our eventual. Um... Yeah, but aren't those aren't, aren't those twenty years apart, or at but least eighteen years? They're still already, I'd say, they're still already a record we have in our head. Like this is who we think of when we hear that voice, and then it, then it, then we hear Jack Nicholson, and then we hear Mark Hamill. And for a lot of people, I think that that becomes the definitive Joker. Not that it's the, not that no other Joker will do, but that be, may become a, your definitive Joker in your head. Just like for me, if I'm reading the comic to a certain degree, I do hear Kevin Conroy's voice. Yeah. Do I still uh, do I still appreciate when uh, Nolan North does a version of Batman? Sure, Dietrich Bader I actually like quite a bit. He's done a bunch of different takes on Batman, and but because we've had those roles played by so many different actors it's a little easier to step into a new joker role for us mentally to be like oh you know what this is this is a new joker by alan tudyk who i think he does a great job voice acting in it in something as far as uh uh not candy crush but uh, i can't think of the name suddenly wreck it ralph uh he's, that makes he's, more yeah, sense he's the, it, the 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 name of the game is sugar rush the, the race car game but Wreck It Ralph, he plays King Candy. What the? Who are you? I'm Turbo, the greatest racer ever. And I did not reprogram this world to let you and that holocaust this riddled warthog take it away from me. But then eventually, then he also plays the the robot in he plays K2SO in Rogue One. So he has he has a range in his voice. So in that, like when he plays Joker, I. I hear another version of the Joker, which is good, but I don't have that same because of that 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 embedded idea of Bugs Bunny is locked in, and they and because maybe maybe they would have been better off if by after Mel uh, Mel Blanc died, they found a new voice actor and he played it differently. That way they could keep changing it up, change it up, and it wouldn't feel it wouldn't feel off kilter. Because you always hear like oh, he's pitched up just a bit too much on that laugh, or it just feels a bit off because you have such that ingrained idea of like, oh, this should be Mickey Mouse, this should be the Joker. Like, like there's Bill Farmer should will always be goofy in my head. Like that's even he just is his like that is Bill Farmer. Like you, you lock into these voices. And, and can I? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. And Kareem, I think this is where why the Joker is. These are it's it's volume of content. Um, Joker, yeah, you think of the '66 series, which ran I th- I want to say four seasons, maybe. You know, there's not a huge body of work there. Yeah. And then there is um, Jack Nichol- uh Jack Nicholson, who in a two-hour movie owns it, but it's a two-hour film. Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, Daffy Duck, Goofy, all of those. There is just reams and reams of content with those voices and voices that are specifically geared towards young children to watch over and over and over and over again. So it's a much harder thing to break out of, you know, at least that's, that's how it feels to me. Like you could change the Joker voice. Mark Hamill may be my favorite, but I can accept it. You make Bugs Bunny sound somehow different than I'm expecting. Like Ken pointed out, you notice the small different differences, but I don't think I could accept a completely new voice at this point, just an entirely different take. Watch up, Doc. That's kind of normal around here. You know something? If we're going out, we're going out loony. Let's go, team. All toony, big moony, full loony. Give me that ball, rabbit. Well, and I, and I think I'm, again, going in circles. I think my point was that you don't have to accept a new voice for an old character structure. My point was, is that if you're going to change the voice, which they did, that was their creative choice to do, that you then change parts of the character so that when you, you can disassociate yourself from, oh, this is the, you know, the reams of, of uh, voice acting that I remember in my head to this character, if the character comes in as different then what, you know, it, not only is the character different somewhat, not fundamentally, you don't have to like turn him into like a fucking werewolf or anything, 
But if he comes in acting slightly different with a different voice, then you can compartmentalize like this is a different Bugs. And I'm going on the journey with this Bugs in this movie versus what I knew back in the other stuff. So you know, sort of like what we do with Skeletor. It's like, yeah, this is Skeletor for this version of, of the story. It isn't the one I grew up with. Same thing with, you know, Starscream, like, or I mean, uh, Megatron, like I wasn't a huge fan of that voice, but mm -hmm. I'm like this, if this is what they're going to do for this series of movies, that's what I'm going to have to, you know, suspend disbelief for and go on the journey with this because it's different than what I grew up with. And that's what I'm saying that they should have done with Bugs. Instead, they were trying to play it as this is the old, you know, he's acting, looks and should sound like the old Bugs because he's doing all the things the old Bugs used to do, but he sounds different now that now there's that uncanny valley for you to be like, okay, well, that. I'm noticing it different. I mean, maybe that's that's the thing is that because because they don't try and they don't try and alter anything all for you all this time. They've tried to stay as close to the original one as as much as they could. That's why it does sound sound so off to your ears. Ah, damn it! You found it. <laughs> um, Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. You can put this up on the Instagram. Check us out at uh, Tangential Giants on Instagram. I was gonna say, did you quickly draw this up? Yeah. I know you have a surface. Did you pull out your pen I mean, real quick? You know, that's impressive. No, no, not, that, that's not. I also added the watermark on there too. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, no, never mind. By the way, don't look up uh, Bugs Bunny Werewolf on DeviantArt. You'll you'll go the wrong way in, in life. <laughs> look up, look up Bugs anything on Bunny, DeviantArt. DeviantArt. I think you can type in Marshmallow on DeviantArt and you're going to go the wrong don't way. Do yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's <laughs> a bad time will be had by you. I think everything's a left turn in DeviantArt. Hence the title. Yeah. I mean, if yeah um <laughs> we, so, we talk about the smurfs as well did you, did you guys watch that did, oh did that's that right i did not see the the, the Katy perry version or the oh, I think christina ritchie's in one of them no that's casper no she, oh that's right <laughs> that is casper oh, casper, casper does that, uh, that ooh, does count that does but she's count. also in i think she's also in the she's the like purple hair man uh, she cannot get enough smurf She's um, like the rocker Smurf that has like human flesh skin, human. Vexy. Uh, is what, that her what name? Is, Ve yeah, her name is Vexy. Which it's I'm part of my brain is unfortunately I know a fair amount, a little bit about the lore of Smurfs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't don't backtrack. And you said a fair amount, and then you backtracked yeah. a, a little bit. Because I, I mean, I know, I know the name. I don't want to misre misrepresent for the uh, the Smurf aficionados that listen to our podcast. I don't want them to feel like oh, I'm trying to st step on their toes. They're busy one handed on DVR right now. Don't worry about it. I did mention DeviantArt, so they could have that could have spawned. They've, they've yeah. already left us. There was a lot of pet pause buttons. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so like she's the new Smurf, Vexy Smurf, but there's hypothetically, depending on the Smurf lore you're listening to, there's no natural born female Smurfs. They're I all. Think that, I don't even think that's lore. I think it's that's isn't that just the history of it? That's but science. That's, but that's yeah, what really I'm saying. Is, like, <laughs> is it, within the series? There's there's two artificially created uh, female smurfs and that's it except for a grandmother one that's never fully uh doc like explained where she came from so this new one vexy i'm like wait where's where did vexy come from considering we don't know i mean maybe it's in the movie and they should they show how they make a third well, third one funny enough that you should say that like i said i watched them but i actually don't remember because there's a whole village of female <laughs> there's like a whole amazon like a whole uh hemisphere whole... of smurfs oh so they're just, they're just altering the world the lore of the world how dare they well sort of <laughs> it's weird though because they they admit in the first one that uh and i think the whole second one's actually about how she was created like i think she's in the first one they kind of hint towards it and the second movie is about about her backstory how she was created and how she was like designed to like basically be a uh, narc she was supposed to go in and figure out how the smurfs work and then report back to guarding but she ended up just staying Did yeah, she so just... Dark, that's that's smurfette's origin too though that they're all no, that, what I'm saying is in the second one they mentioned that and and Vexy is kind of like her conduit out of like to like you know because she's basically struggling with I'm the only female and she meets this this other girl who's like I'm a smurf who drinks and gets fucked up let's go have fun and so she's like I, I'm bonding with her on a sister level but there's also like I said there's also a whole lesbos of smurf somewhere else that she runs into that are like these smurfs in the jungle or something that can like throw and shoot bow and arrows and things like that. So I don't, that's where they start to expand the like, oh, there are more that female Smurfs. is a the, lot. The mythos of Smurfs. Mm -hmm. That's Pay a lot up. to take in. <laughs> yeah. Pierre Clifford is rolling over in his grave. 
He's just because upset. he was a misogynist. No, because he was just like he's like, what did they do to this magical world that I created? Why would you show this? To me? <laughs> I I'd like to. Uh, what is this? What is this person's name? I'd like is to that, thank uh, Alexi yeah. uh, Gribanoff for Were Rabbit, Bugs Bunny, and Lola Bunny. <laughs> Uh, I'm not, not going to hit next. I'm just going to stop sharing. Don't go stop. to our Don't go to our Instagram to see this image. The <laughs> third one. Jump off the Instagram now. Yeah. Like we're, that's, the first. That's going to be the yeah. thumbnail. People are going to be like, "What the hell is that?" Oh my god. Uh, okay, we can move on to. I it's mean, because so well, you guys didn't watch that one. Did you guys watch Scooby Doo? The 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 I was about to say the Brendan Fraser one, but no. Um, the Wait, there's a Brendan Fraser one. No, no, no. I my brain is just stuck on the back in action. I also, uh, you, the Freddie Prince Jr. The and Sarah Michelle Gellar and Matthew Lillard and Linda Cardellini. Linda, I think it's it. I don't think yeah. I would count Scooby Doo in this scenario. But he's it's a- well, it, uh, under, if we're operating under the idea that it originated as a cartoon and then your CGI counts as animation, then we're then that that does fall into this I, category. I am not saying that it doesn't fall into the category given the definition. I'm just in saying my, it doesn't fall into the category yeah. given the definition. It, fuck it, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, it's just, I think it's because Scooby-Doo is the only, an, it, that's who's animated. None of the other like traditionally animated characters. Well, I mean, a lot, are, of the, yeah. all live a lot of the ghosts uh, are animation though. Uh, Aren't I mean, the ghosts like the Yeah. The yeah, there's ghosts that are in there, and spoilers. There also there's also Scrappy Doo. Yeah. So there's two characters that are animated. I, <laughs> you didn't need to bring that up. I mean, I feel like Scrappy Doo is past LeBron Scrappy James. Scrappy fucking dumb. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a weird. I mean, I, it's it's definitely it does walk the line. I agree with you because it is not like it's not like they're running around like in addition to Scooby Doo. There's also other Hanna Barbera cartoons out there within the world. It's it's not the it's just him, you know, outside of the the lone appearance. And also, they're all like, acting. They're all acting against against him, though. Like it isn't just like Shaggy's yeah, only season, but, right? But it's not like an overly like because the same could be said for Casper. Fair, but and Casper also has his three uncles. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah, and, but I mean, if you're counting the number of animations, then the ghosts right. count for Scooby Doo. Right, and that that's why I'm saying like it's that's why when I originally posited this, I thought that keeping it to 2D animation versus 3D would help define things a bit more because with things like this, like te- technically speaking, when we, we didn't count Lion King, but we would count Jungle Book that has Mowgli who's still live action and the rest are CG animals. So it's the CG, the CG the nature beast. of it. Beauty and the Beast. That's another, that's the, yeah. Uh, mm. It's, it's, there's a gray area. It's all on a spectrum. So it's like, where do we draw the line? And that, that's why I had mentioned it earlier. But as Scooby-Doo, I can definitely see an argument for both sides. So it's, yeah. Um, interesting. I, I guess. I'm just trying to figure out, like, how you would classify Beauty and the Beast, because that one seems very tricky. Right, yeah. That, that, we agree. That's why we're saying, like, it's by, by allowing CG, it makes the, the spectrum far fuller. Because you're like, okay, if just one character is animated. Because then also there's, there's movies where you have... Um, <clears throat> like talking dogs in them. I was thinking, um, God, what was it? There was the one that had, I can't, I can't remember, but maybe I'm mixing up movies, but you have movies where dog, where animals can talk and look who's talking now. No, no that's, but they, the, that's they the second one. What's the third one? Luke, who's talking to, or, yeah, no, look, who's Luke talking, talking now. Yeah. Now oh. that's the third one. Cause looking talking Two is the second one with Roseanne Barr's. There it is. Thank you. Not to be confused with with when Bruce Willis is doing it his solo as Bruno, from, yes, you know <laughs> Bruno the kid. Yeah. Well, I mean, the talking dogs isn't. Ca- I mean, I think we prefaced it at least by starting off as an as a two D animation, though, right? I mean, it's. I think. Oh yeah. If if the original. Well then, yeah. If if we're starting out with the if the original. So you're talking about something like Lady and the Tramp, maybe. Even that, I mean, Beauty and the Beast started out as, as a car, as That's an animated 2D. movie too, though. Yeah. yeah. And Lady and the Tramp started out as, as 2D animation, and that that they're Lady and the Tramp. That's the where because the, they're they're talking, but they're not talking to the humans. Right. So it's like it's where does the line cross? Because and I don't know the characters. Yeah. Well, because well, oh, yeah, it's a good question. Because if we do it that way, I can make a case that Avengers: Infinity War counts. 
Thanos is basically the main character and Rocket that's Raccoon. CGI, right? Yeah. They start a traditional 2D animation. Yeah, I mean it's I mean I Oh, I don't make the case. I'm just saying I, yeah. I can in that scenario. There's an interesting one on the the mask makes this list. I'm looking at a list I'm referencing well, IMDb. I don't I don't, th- I don't think the Thanos one counts though because he wasn't known for being a 2D animation though. Animation. He's a two D. He was a two D character. See, okay, but he wasn't. He's, he hasn't been thoroughly known as like like yeah, like Scooby Doo's a, a cartoon. Like he, that's what people know him as. And then when you make a live, I think I guess we have to make a third pillar being not only was it two D, uh, not only uh, could you have actors acting against it, but he had to be traditionally known as an animated character. Osmosis Jones is also on this list, which I forgot existed. Oh, I didn't. I've, I've oddly enough, I've never forgot it's, it's existed because it's for some reason in my brain. You bring it up every podcast. I didn't bring it up the last podcast. I didn't bring it up the last podcast either. Either. But you love you love talking about it. I just know about it. It's in my brain. There's stuff that can't get out. But the <laughs> but the live action of the cartoons don't interact in a direct way. Yeah. Because in the they're the the cart the animations happening inside of Bill Murray, and. When he like if he burps, they interact, but they're not. And directly... He doesn't have to. Yeah, he's not face to face. Or yeah, he's not saying, "Hey guys, do you feel good in there?" Like he's not interacting with them directly. So, yeah. really, what we're getting to is that this very specific subgenre of movie, Roger Rabbit. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Did it so well the first time, nobody was going to get close, and every time they've tried, it's just been a hot pile of trash. Can we think? Can we think of something that's at least second though? Well, evidently, it's Song of the South from ratings. So okay, you know. no, we can't because because Gone with the Wind would still be like up there. We have to really update these things. And, and um, do do you have a list so I can take a look at there. it too? Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it is a list. It's just Pat saying Song of the South. Well, because also at this point, then you could also interject that the original Mary Poppins. They have animated that's, sections. That and that's I'd rather replace no and i am with mary poppins i am but being see, facetious it, it it should be mary poppins it should 100%. not really because mary poppins isn't known as a 2d cartoon is it uh it there's it's not known as but there's a, there's a there's more sequences of animated features that i think in song of the south simply by the fact that the movie is longer than song of the south okay. song of the south is just a standalone cartoon in quotations as opposed to the full-length movie that is uh But Mary Poppins, good God, yeah. I don't know that escaped me like that. <laughs> it looks like, uh, actually does look like Mary Poppins is the, actually that might be the highest rated on here. That's okay. funny. I'm, I'm looking at a list from, it looks like Wikipedia and like, they, like they go by just decades and the things that they choose to like mark on both sides are like, oh yeah, Gremlins 2. It's like, oh, I guess Gremlins 2 does have like the animated the energy gremlin that's that's a ah, that, doesn't, that doesn't count, count. that's I'm, electricity i'm just yeah. saying that but it's that's also just, done, that's just shitty cgi but also uh, uh, let's also comment no this is animated by chuck jones so it has electricity it, was animated by chuck jones yeah it's anime uh, chuck Damn. jones animated opening sequence and the ending se- sequence that has far more pedigree than many of the other things on this list in this scenario no wait what do you mean by opening sequence is because if that's actual animation, that's different. I thought about the electricity bolt that just flies across the screen. Yeah, that, that's. I, it says an animated. Oh, it says elect, it says electronic gremlin stop motion and Chuck Jones animated opening and ending sequences for the the Gremlins to the new batch. Yeah, I have to remember what the opening sequences were because those yeah. come out, those might just be full full two D animations. Yeah, but not interacting with the thing. Yeah, that's trust yeah. me. I'm just saying this is the list that Wikipedia has. And they give well, a certain. Like we should go in there and change that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there's like, yeah, there's also. Oh well, also, there's also, if you guys remember, not oh, got it. It's Better Off Dead. Better Off Dead has cartoons that the Where's main character with uh, John Cusack. John Cusack. It's uh, he, he has. There's moments where he's drawing stuff, and it's drawn by it's done by Sta- Savage right. Steve Cohen, and he interacts with that cartoon and. But it's not like it, it's like him talking to himself kind of scenes. It's not like it comes to life and saves the world, but it, he does interact with it in that way. I'm surprised you didn't bring up Aha's take on me. That's not a movie. Does it have to be a movie? It felt like yes! a movie in my, in my heart. We were all talking about movies. That's what... Just say it. <laughs> I like it's, a, you're it's like, like a very like... small movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, so that's I how long Space Jam should have been. A short film. <laughs> it's actually a student film. <laughs> 
Was there anything else on that list, or was or was that just? I think, I like you said, I think Roger Rabbit's probably gonna be our top one. It's just sad that nothing's. Mary Poppins, Roger Rabbit are gonna be the standard bears, and everything else is gonna be like maybe that counts. Like SpongeBob SquarePants is on there. I don't know if that counts. It has scenes of it. it it's he... like it's it's predominantly cartoon, but then there's scenes where they go up on land mm -hmm. and they interact with humans. It's not. It's not to the to the degree that either of those other movies are but See, I feel like at least two-thirds of the movie has to be a mix of the both like you just can't be like oh we're gonna have this movie for we're... for two-thirds of it and then switch Our, it over to something else mary poppins doesn't even totally fit that build in either yeah. so it's, it's... our rules are getting really specific it's like only roger rabbit works in this scenario <laughs> there are other we just talked about we said i mean we said scooby-doo we said the smurfs are like that the chipmunks are i had a problem with the chipmunks just because they weren't fucking kid sizes that they were in the movie or in the show uh, yeah because they, they went for realism and i'm like that doesn't make i mean i'd rather have the weird four foot tall versions of them than the actual yeah. like it was weird when they gave dave rabies that was fucked up <laughs> best movie that makes live action and animation i just i felt like that would have been it would have been so if you're going to do cgi why not make them cgi four foot tall ones who put James and the Giant Peach at the top of this list? What I, drunk yeah, bastard. Uh, I per don't even remember where was the live action, and I don't, and that's my it's, failing. I don't it's, remember. Is it, stop stop, is it it's stop motion? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't oh, count. Right. It's yeah. uh, maybe somebody's hand was still in the frame. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, user, user, uh, P R E E hyphen two five three. Hey, don't be doxing people on here. How dare you! <laughs> Yeah, shit list, man. Shit list. Osmosis Jones. Oh, Enchanted. That's a. Ooh, but they don't. Enchanted. They, they but they switch between the two worlds. They don't yeah, integrate the two. Wait, no, wait. Got, oh no, because the squirrel. Even when the squirrel comes over, it's a live action squirrel. Yeah. So that is the count. moment they hit the real world, they become real. That's Anch what I was saying. As far as like two thirds of one entire thing and a third of the other. Anchors away. What? Bed knobs and broomsticks. Fine. Didn't they just Mary oh. Poppins again? Oh no. What about um Puff the Magic Dragon? Not Puff. Um, Pete's Dragon. Pete's Dragon should be on the list. Pete's Dragon. I don't remember actually. Seeing oh, there that. it is. Yeah. Yeah, Pete's Dragon. That's that's for sure. That's two D animation. He he does things where he interacts, like he blows fire and lights in like he's flying at one point. That's that's higher on my list than so a couple of things we've already seen on here. But Pete's Dragon for sure counts. Cool World unfortunately counts. <laughs> Why all, is this all this? Because we hate Cool World. I I'm stunned by the things that they like. The Lego Movie is. I mean, that doesn't count. Technically, on this person's list, it uh, well, I mean, Will Ferrell does kind of interact with the he's things. He's got a no. He no doesn't. He does not. Yeah, remember, they like they like hit him in the eye with with the uh, top of the glue thing or whatever. Like he yeah, interacts. But it wasn't with... the animated I'm, character. I'm, did you it? Said it was like you saw was, a Lego. You said technically. I was following that train of thought. This, regardless, this moron didn't put Roger Rabbit at the top. So everything he, he says at? is wrong. Number four. Yeah, it's way, way 16. 16. Way 16. too low. He's what was drunk. before it? With all due respect, what the fuck are you talking about? What's up? What was before it again? Lego movie. Oh, yeah, Looney Tunes right. back in action is, is higher on the list than and Space this, Jam. Oh, this is this is ridiculous. The mask is on his list. What is wrong with this person? person's drunk i guess uh, the oh the incredible really mr limpet okay the incredible mr limpet does count in this but i don't see like oh man this is this is stunning in the bad this inappropriate placement list <laughs> it's a bad list yeah it's a real bad list it's some, some bullshit song of the south number seven on the list guys just want to point that out real quick you, you've said that at least 13 times for the title it should be days. noted that that is higher than yeah that's what i was getting at it is, it is much higher than roger rabbit which gives you all you need to know about this list well we we know we, we can we can assume where uh this guy's uh, political standings lean yeah <laughs> there's some movie called heavy traffic that i've never heard of no idea 1973 that's higher on the list than anything that it, it anything else than roger rabbit that's i'm uh, that i'm befuddled i'm befuddled I, that's the word i'm thinking <laughs> heavy traffic is gonna have to be on a lot of drugs to watch from what i'm seeing here oh i think you're confusing heavy. that with heavy metal no nope. it, it could be it could be from the producers of from the quality it, it could be a ralph bakshi thing like it's it does not look good 
No, I'm not. I'm not enjoying this oh, at all. The new Tom and Jerry movie is live action, and there we go. How did like we went right uh. past like timeline? Like, oh, yeah. anyways, this is we live in weird times. This is ridiculous. This is, this is what happens when we pick a topic and then veer hard right at the start. Of this. <laughs> well, that was just I, like the, that was the. I don't even think we discussed what the to- the topic was. That was this is literally been a uh, podcast focused just on the start of P- Space Jam. That's that's fine, and that's that's where this we didn't is. mention that we tried to start off talking about music at all. That's and that's why that's going to be another episode. Yeah, Tune I mean, we, I was going to say we can use our segue bridge to uh, talk about R. Kelly and his uh, his involvement with Space Jam. <laughs> I mean, it's important. Oh, it's pretty man. freaking important. It kind of it kind of oh. helps that movie it, a lot. It's literally what made the movie as popular as it was. In you a know lot what I'm thinking now too. That may have been. Oh, I mean, geez. not that you know a soundtrack really is super important these days. I guess because of streaming. But I wonder if that's kind of what helped a relatively not good movie kind of get to the heights it the heights that it did versus yes. this one. Like I, I had think the, of a song from this one. I had the cassette single for that. Right. It was just in the cardboard the cardboard thing and. The cassette, I had that, so it's like yeah. there's there's a certain amount of like. Also, I mean, like the kid eyes of just like, oh, it's it's them acting together, it's fun, and then like certain outside media just pushed me into thinking like this was fun. Well, I'm like saying there's there's a there's a level of synergy that we don't get. Like there are artists out here that are still making music videos, and I'm like, fuck, there's a music video for this. And I remember on heavy rotation on pretty much every. I mean, do you guys remember what the box was or like you know, at least VH1, uh, MTV, stuff like that? Heavy rotation when this movie came out is that that song was everywhere. So if you didn't see the movie, at least got four and a half. Of, it was actually a pretty long video. So five minutes worth of the movie or at least the animation style in that video. Or at least in the backdrops. I think yeah. he was like walking around in a basketball court somewhere. But, you know, there were scenes in a splurge. So you'd be like, oh, I never I didn't get around to seeing it, but I've, I know of it. There's also a, a seal song on the on the original soundtrack too, so Yeah, but he's never gonna be Kiss from a Rose. I was going to say, true, I th- he submitted his legacy with uh, that shitty Schumacher stuff. I mean, the, Schumacher aside, that song was just like, it was everywhere. Ben Affleck sang that song on the set of Clerks, okay? But it's like in Mulrats. Like, that's, that's how embedded it was that you had. But that's, but that's what I'm also wondering, though, is it's it a part of hit. that synergy, though, that we were talking about? Because, again, I wonder... If I mean, the movie, if the movie helped, it take off. If the song helped the movie kind of take off, I think I feel like it was a movie though. The movie pushed the song, and then it out. The song outlasted the hey movie. Man, Daredevil wouldn't be the cultural phenomenon it was without Evanescence's help. It's just. I, it'd be, uh, sadly enough, I thought that was Electra. <laughs> I even I remember the Daredevil movie, like that song being for Daredevil in the movie. I thought it was just for Electra. I have concerns with I can believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. That it's going to some- now in hindsight, but that it's going to somehow turn out. Oh, and then R. Kelly wrote that about underage sex again. <laughs> just there's going to be. You, you said you said you think it's going to be. No, no, you I think I'm it's going to be. <laughs> Don't be concerned. It's a fact. Like all of the songs, just about underage sex. All right. I think that given the the amount of time that we want to give to the year 2003 i think we need to kind of i think we should stay stay in our lane for the rest of this episode and stick with our animation discussion animation live action discussion and save the 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 hits of 2003 for next time so don't forget to tune in then 